Hello, I'm Steve Feinstein. I'm a professor of medicine at Rush University Medical Center in Chicago, Illinois. And as a cardiologist, my area of expertise is non-invasive imaging and preventive medicine. These two merge together when we use contrast ultrasound techniques to identify early disease in at-risk patients, that is patients with early metabolic disease, metabolic disorders, diabetes, or proven cardiovascular disease. So together with non-invasive imaging, ultrasound contrast agents, and echocardiography, we are able to identify premature disease in our patients. Thank you. Hello. This presentation was part of a uh, invited lecture at the Leading Edge Conference in 2009 at Atlantic City, New Jersey. I begin the presentation by showing two old friends, Barry Goldberg and Harvey Fagenbaum, both leaders in their field of ultrasound in radiology and ultrasound in cardiology. On to atherosclerosis and imaging in real time. I will present a series of slides and movies showing bedside and then back to the bench. Uh, contrast enhanced ultrasound and carotid vasovasorum imaging. We will then move to quantification, clinical studies, experimental data, and future uses. To begin with, cardiovascular disease is in fact pan-epidemic. What technology are we going to use? Who's going to rescue and make early diagnosis of patients? Who will build it? Who's going to pay for it? And how do patients access health care? Non-invasive imaging, as shown here by Rembrandt and his early Dutch explorers. Ultrasound is portable, goes to the bedside, and is quite inexpensive. As this slide demonstrates, we can image any part of the body, including the carotid, the heart, the kidney, the aorta, with ultrasound, and contrast can be used to enhance the lumen and the perfusion of tissue. The next slide is a series of movie slides actually demonstrating the parts of the body that we've imaged with ultrasound and contrast. So we consider this our cardiovascular prevention center. At the core is the ultrasound system. In the upper left corner is an example of a patient and the different parts of the body. And each corresponding movie shows successive imaging of different parts of the body, heart, carotid, kidney, the IMT, and handheld information systems as long uh, as we can record data from the patient's charts. The next slide is an example of a tumor or atherosclerosis. And as you will note, there's a necrotic core as well as a lining along the lumen surface in this excised carotid plaque from a patient. Exactly how do plaques grow? What makes them survive? It is, in fact, the blood vessels or the vasovasorum that actually penetrate the wall of the artery into the media and intima surface, providing the tumors or the abnormal growth with new blood vessels. As seen in this series of photographs from 1991, this is from an autopsy sequence where the coronary artery is highlighted here, or the luminogram is well seen from a silicon high pressure injection. The plaque is noted here with a piece of calcium in it, and as you progress from the left to the right, you'll notice that the vasculature is actually bathing the plaque. So this is very much an angiogenesis based atherosclerotic tumor in this autopsy specimen. An early marker of preclinical atherosclerosis is the vasovasorum, as identified by Biederman. In these series of quotes on this slide, taken from her paper from Fleiner et al. in 2004, she described that the vasovasorum is actually an early sign of atherosclerosis and occurs prior to the development of IMT thickness. This slide is our very first example in 2003 
of a human carotid artery with contrast ultrasound demonstrating angiogenesis in an atherosclerotic plaque. As you can see on the surface of the carotid artery, the vasovasorum lining can be identified. However, within the tumor itself, or the atherosclerotic plaque, you can see evidence of contrast agents circulating. The next series of slides will show the clinical pathologic correlates to the carotid plaque angiogenesis that I've demonstrated. This again is a histologic sample from a patient who had a carotid artery atherosclerotic plaque surgically removed. As you can see on the left part of the slide, that's the lumen and a corresponding necrotic core. There are cholesterol crystals also seen. As we begin to look inside the plaque itself into the matrix of the plaque, we can identify many irregularly shaped vasculature. Uh, these are endothelial lined angiogenic vessels. You can note there are two red cells trapped inside one vessel in the center right screen. Of note, in the upper left corner where it's marked hemosiderin deposits, you can note there's a brownish stain in the matrix without evidence of angiogenic vessels. Using the same slide series, but staining with CD31, which is a mouse autoantibody to human endothelial cells, you can note there's a growth of endothelial vessels and new vasculature throughout the atherosclerotic plaque. And an important stain is the hemosiderin stain identifying iron deposits within the plaque. What this indicates is that when the plaques rupture and the red cells actually extrude from the vasovasorum vessels, the iron within the hemoglobin is deposited in the tumor itself or the plaque and remains there permanently and can be later stained with hemosiderin. This graph demonstrates a recent publication in 2007 from the Journal of Vascular Medicine in which we compared and correlated the ultrasound contrast angiogenesis to the histologic examples from the tissue specimen. What you can see is that the histology correlated very well with the visual quantitation of angiogenesis noted within the specimen in 17 specimen or 15 patients. This next view is an open vasculature exposure during surgery taken from Stroke 2007 and Vincenzi's article. What you see on the middle left is the common carotid then bifurcating into both the internal and the external carotid. Please note the surface of the artery itself is filled with small wisp-like vessels. These are in fact angiogenic vessels. And another view from the same paper in 2007 reveals a standard carotid imaging in A, then B with color Doppler, and C with contrast enhanced ultrasound. Note that within the plaque itself are the small microspheres. And finally, from the same paper of stroke 2007, another example of the contrast enhanced carotid in A, and in B, you can see the microvasculature and C, of course, at the time of surgery. This is a patient taken from our laboratory at Rush University Medical Center in Chicago. It's a patient who has a graft in the carotid artery. What you'll note is there's very little angiogenesis within the dark luminal structures. These, in fact, represent the arterial grafts. However, on the next slide, proximal to the uh, bifurcation, you can see vast amounts of angiogenesis lining the arterial surface of the artery while the contrast flows through the lumen itself. The next slide is courtesy of uh, Professor Mazzari and Stefano Colli in Milan, Italy. It's a patient with Takayasu's disease, and notice that the inflamed arterial wall is tremendously vascular after the contrast injection. By the way, all these contrast injections are uh, injected through a peripheral vein 
in the arm, circulating through the right heart, lungs, ultimately to the left heart, and then to the carotid artery. So none of these are arterial injections, but venous injections, requiring only a half milliliter of a contrast agent. In this slide, you can note that the inflammatory wall is filled with vasculature consistent with the inflammatory nature of Takayasu's disease and, in fact, looks very similar to the previous images I've shown you with atherosclerosis. And, in fact, the next slide, courtesy of Hans-Peter Westcott from Hanover, Germany, what you will notice is that the plaque can be seen intruding upon the lumen but you can also notice there's an external surface to the plaque which is positive remodeling as well as negative remodeling and in fact the atherosclerotic plaque is filled with contrast agent signifying that the vessels are within this tumor or atherosclerotic plaque. The next image is a patient of mine who's 53 year old diabetic gentleman, not on a statin. On the left, in real time, you can see the common carotid artery. You can see the contrast entering. And if you will note, at the bifurcation, there's an exceedingly bright signal which indicates the vasoazorum over the bifurcation. The image on the right is eight months later after placing the patient on a statin to reduce the inflammatory response of atherosclerosis to the arterial wall. As you note, when we approach the bifurcation on the right, the vessel that was so apparent on the left is now only a remnant. This is probably the first indication of regression of angiogenesis seen in a patient. This was published in 2006. This patient example was one week ago in our laboratory. It's an asymptomatic patient seen for preventive screening. As you will notice on the posterior far wall, the IMT can be seen as normal. However, as we approach the bulb, there's IMT thickness. And if you look carefully, in fact, in one of the plaques seen at the bulb on the far wall, there's actually vasculature. As we move towards the bulb in the same patient, you can note that the far wall plaque identified at the bulb is in fact quite vascular as well as thickened. And the final image in this sequence shows that the plaque not only intrudes into the lumen and is vascular, but also extends outward or caused positive remodeling. So the tumor or plaque actually extends both inward and outward and is readily seen in this example. Now what about quantification of these images? To date, most efforts have been simply qualitative. Working with Dan Adam from Haifa uh, at the Technion Institute in Israel, Dan has developed an in vitro test model where we can actually design the carotid artery and the vasoazorum. The next series of slides will show our results. What you see on the left slide is flow through the plastic tubing in the lumen, and if you notice in the upper left, you'll see the small vessels flowing through the vasoazorum. In a series of calibration studies, we noted that as the contrast concentration increased, so did the video image in both the lumen and the vasoazorum. As we began to develop this model, we are now using 3D imaging of the vasoazorum and lumen. When we move into clinical studies, we have also performed calibration studies. What you see in this slide is an intravenous injection of 0.5, 1.0, and 1.5 milliliters of an ultrasound contrast agent. In the patient, the lumen is increasingly bright and the vasoazorum, as identified by the green and blue regions of interest, are also increasing in brightness. And if you look at the graph, you will notice that as the lumen increases in brightness, so does the vasoazorum, very similar to the in vitro tube study. 
Furthermore, we are looking at ways to quantify the vase of Azor. We have identified a region of interest between the lumen and the intima media, and that considered a standard vasoazorum baseline or normalization. And then we have a region between the green line, as you see, and the blue line, which includes the vasoazorum. So in order to do this, we actually developed a ratio of adventitial intensity to lumen intensity. Based on this data, we have looked retrospectively at around 159 patients from our laboratory. What we found is that patients who had significant more angiogenesis had, in fact, an increased incidence of heart attack or stroke. Now, this represents a retrospective study correlating the presence and amount of angiogenesis in our patients. It does not represent a prospective study at this time. Furthermore, we are looking to develop animal models that mimic the human atherosclerotic condition. We've been working with the researchers at the University of Wisconsin involving the vasovisorum activities seen in the Rapaz familial hypercholesterolemic swine model. What you see in the upper right corner is an insert of the FH swine and in the lower left two boxes, the femoral arteries and the histology of the femoral artery. On the right, an angiographic view, and below that, the ultrasonic view of the femoral artery. What you will see now on the right is a real-time image of a contrast injection, intravenous injection in the FH swine. The lumen is highlighted, but what you'll notice above the lumen are presence of angiogenic vessels filling the wall, indicating atherosclerosis. Simply seen in this slide, we then began to develop a serial quantification of the vasozorm in the FH swine. At five weeks, 13 weeks, and 43 weeks, please note the vasozorm above the lumen was poorly seen at five weeks, minimally at 13, and was significantly seen at 43 weeks. In our conclusions, then, the uh, contrast-enhanced imaging is a unique platform to study atherosclerosis, and the Rapaz pig model apparently is a good place to begin this investigation. Future issues will resolve uh, the difficulties we currently have in planar imaging with 2D and what we prefer to image is a volumetric analysis of the carotid artery, the lumen, and the vasoazorum as seen in this slide. Ultimately, the 3D representation as shown here will show the lumen, the bifurcation, and the adventitial structures in one volumetric analysis. Finally, site-specific drug delivery therapeutic systems are being developed. The microspheres carry agents and with the activation of ultrasound will deliver at certain locations their payloads. A simple slide demonstrates the agent is mixed with the microbubble and the ultrasound energy then destroys the microbubbles and delivers the agent at sites. Thank you very much.